a point in which will let us know if we get above this range and get a daily and not to mention a weekly close or a monthly close, you're going to have your cue for a continued bull run. Hello everyone, Nicholas Merton talks about the latest Bitcoin storm and what is expected to come in the near future. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. However, I want to go ahead and just indicate here above all that price action right now is showcasing that the market is in that decision phase. It is in the Bitcoin storm, which we've talked about and we've been through before. And the big reason for that is obviously one of the major micro events that's going on. When I say micro, I'm talking about events within the crypto space particularly, not the macro sphere. In this case, we've got the halving event going on. Now, it depends on which countdown you're looking at here, but generally speaking, most of the countdowns are pointing to somewhere around April 18th. Generally speaking, around 10 days from where we are now at the time of recording. It's incredible to think we're here. I've been here through the prior having event back in 2020. I remember hearing about the prior event as well in 2016. And overall, it's a really exciting event for crypto, irrespective of where you think markets are going, because this really only comes around every four years. And it does have a major supply adjustment on Bitcoin's uh, overall minting of new Bitcoin every single day within the blocks. Essentially, we're going to be dropping from around 900 Bitcoin a day down to 450. And that's definitely considering Bitcoin's market cap, a pretty significant change in overall you know, dollar Bitcoin that is hitting potentially the spot market every day for miners to cover their expenses. However, at the same time, we've echoed here before on this channel that this having event has a weaker effect than the prior having event, as is with the prior having event. Essentially speaking, having events become weaker and weaker and weaker over time because you're essentially having a much smaller net effect on the halving event, right? You can be bullish on the halving event. I'm not here to say that it's not a good thing. It absolutely is. Uh, but the thing is whether or not this is going to be able to support price extensively over the next year or two, because at the end of the day, we're, we're talking about going from an inflation rate of one point, I think 1.4% to essentially 0.7%. Right. If we take a look back at prior having events, we were going from inflation rates that were going from double digits to single digits. So essentially, you're talking about a net reduction in inflation versus the overall supply of much higher amounts versus what we're going to be experiencing in this having event. I know that this is obviously getting people really excited and it is something to consider here. But what I think you're going to also need as one of the dynamics to consider is the overall ETF inflows. Right, these two things are really the key dynamics that are going to determine where Bitcoin's price goes over the next couple of months. And if we take a look at the ETF inflows, you know, we had this great expansion, right? We really flipped our tune. Like back here in week after week four, week five of the ETF, we made it very clear that like guys, the ETF inflows are looking good. Bitcoin can keep going for a while. Altcoins, it's time to start placing some bets, making some money on it. And we made some phenomenal trades, some great returns. We came back swinging in Q1 of 2024, right? We especially, we really captured on the meme coin trend. Uh, we made some strong calls here as well for other strong narratives like DPIN and Bitcoin infrastructure. So don't take me as being ultra bearish here. We made some great returns over the past couple of months. We've been generally long on the market. However, there is something to be noted here, which is that for all of those weeks, we had double digit increases in the amount, uh, excuse me, not uh, double digit thousand increases in Bitcoin's accumulated Bitcoin within the ETF products, right? And that's even including GPTC outflows, which you do need to consider in the equation. We wanna see generally how much new Bitcoin is being parked away within these financial ETP products. And we saw that, of course, as GPT selling had picked up, that number has remained relatively flat since back on week 10. However, while we have ticked up to new highs here, technically, the important thing I want to signify here is that we've got to get back into that rhythm of the, you know, 10 to 30K BTC additions every single week if we really want to clear through those all time highs. And the reason I say that here is because it is going to become more and more in demand here, more of a demand for a, in order to have that continued risk on appetite, for prices to continue expanding at this point from prior all time highs, you are going to need massive amounts of institutional inflows as people have preached is coming, right? So we have to see whether or not that's gonna play out here. I wanna get back in that pattern where we're getting you know, 15, at least 15, 20K BTC weeks on a normal basis. 
with the exception of the ones we had like on back week one, week seven, on, on a rare occasion. Most of the weeks need to be in similar volumes of BTC. And if we don't start seeing that, well, the halving event is great. The halving event is a fraction of the impact here of the ETF inflows. It is much more of a question of whether or not there is the demand for new BTC through the ETF products versus a supply contraction from the halving event. The halving event is a much smaller event in the grand scheme of things versus what the ETF can do for Bitcoin, right? I really want to emphasize that, guys. It's very important to understand that the supply, excuse me, the demand question is the biggest question we have on our minds here, right? So I wanna make clear here that for me personally, seeing those tens of thousands of Bitcoin being purchased on a weekly basis through the ETF would be a huge cue that we are ready for a broader upward move, that we're ready for six figures, that Bitcoin is really going to charter a new bull market beyond its prior all-time highs. If we aren't seeing that, if we're seeing more single digit thousand weeks, sometimes weeks where grayscale outflows are still quite heavy and potentially knocking us down where we're having negative or neutral weeks, that is going to be for me a sign that at a minimum, we are due for a correction down to the 100 day moving average or potentially 200 day moving average, which I know to many people sounds impossible, but it could very well happen in the sense that we just generally face a slow chop down here where the price levels probably no further than 50K, somewhere in that ballpark, but it could be pretty brutal for a lot of altcoins. So just keep that in mind. So the key two levels that I'm watching for here are right under around 60K, around 59 to 59.5K and also here around 75K. I think these ranges here give you some very good ballpark figures to let you know whether or not the trend is really decaying and potentially going down to longer term moving averages where you'll probably be able to scoop up altcoins, particularly at a really great discount. And outside of that as well, a point in which will let us know if we get above this range and get a daily and not to mention a weekly close or a monthly close, you're gonna have your cue for a continued bull run. So that's essentially what these two levels are. I think if you get above $75,000, and the more confirmations you have, like a daily close, a weekly close, a monthly close, those are all gonna be the cues for me, especially if they're aligning with you know tens of thousands of BTC being purchased every week, that's gonna give me the cue that we're going to six figures, right? That's where a lot of the crazy altcoin gains are gonna be made, speculation and risk-taking are gonna be amplified to a large extent, and that's where we can really make some phenomenal returns. If on the other hand, we are coming down here towards around $59,000, which yes, I understand is, is quite a margin from where we are right now. Uh, I would say that that's kind of your safe bet here that we're probably gonna be coming into the 200 day pocket, potentially making the prior ETF highs of around 47, uh, 47,500 uh, to around $50,000 on the WIC or 49K. I think that range could start to become support for a longer continued move back towards the previous all-time highs, maybe even going higher. We'll see how that plays out. That's quite far away, even if that's the case that plays out. But the key point here I'm echoing is that this will at least minimize a lot of the damage and downside. Now, if you're talking particularly about being exposed to Bitcoin, right? If you're a long-term hodler in this case, and especially if you're in a tax jurisdiction like the United States, then I wouldn't be probably, you know, just trying to sell and buy at a discount. I would only do that for altcoins because in that case, you can really get a marginal difference from that point of like, you know, in this case, 35, 40, even 50% on some names, right? You're gonna see some pretty extensive corrections once we get into that 200 day pocket where altcoins, it can be much more favorable to position yourself in there at a nice discount for a continued move, or at least give you better risk adjusted entries. Uh, on the other hand, if you're like getting prices up here to around 75K, at least even though you're paying a premium, you know that there's that momentum there and there's a very good chance that it's gonna continue and really get towards that next leg up where a lot of these altcoins can easily still three, five, 10, 15, 20X from this point on. So that's the kind of way I would play it here. I would not try to trade this range here. I would not try to take any extensive bets for trading within it or betting on the upside or downside from where you're already positioned and make sure you have this kind of framework that can really help you to navigate these environments to make sure you lock in profits you know, for extensive uh, long-term positions that you've held for a long time. But at the same time, you have something that will give you the cue that, hey, you can really start to expose a lot more capital and ride the wave. Um, when I just take a look at others' dominance and others' market cap here, because like, as you all know, my focus here is on the altcoin cycle. 
potential altcoin cycle that could play out where altcoins really leap forward in new valuations. We, we've made some pretty good leaps and bounds here. We're back where we were back during 2021. Now, you all might remember from one of our videos before, we talked about the fact that M2, global liquidity, is hovering around where it was back in 2021. So it makes sense to an extent that we are up here right now. But the question we need to ask ourselves is whether or not global M2 is going to continue expanding because for the last four or five months, it hasn't. It's been flat. And altcoins are extensively, extensively dependent on liquidity and liquidity expansion. It's the only reason we saw all coins go from around a $13 billion market cap in the others category to $450 billion during the last cycle. And we've already leapt up from around $75 billion to $324 billion. So we are going to need an additional surge of money, most likely, or the ETF inflows have got to be really solid so that Bitcoin's valuation can expand and, of course, have a trickle down effect where that liquidity starts to flow into the others, the different types of plays in the altcoin market. Right. But the big thing here I want you guys to, again, just keep in mind is watch others dominance here. This is going to be one of your biggest gauges here. We unfortunately had one of our worst weeks here since back in uh, January, we were not able after multiple weeks to be able to break out to a new close above the prior December highs. And essentially, there's still that stagnation and others dominance. So right now, what I recommend doing is not only looking for those key price levels we talked about for the next major leg up, right, getting above 75k, uh, you know, making sure that we break out of that wedge pattern on Bitcoin, right to the upside, get a, a daily or weekly close above this range. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Nicholas Merton. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.